Hello everyone, this video is on the topic of reducing arousal around toys and food so that you can utilize them in your training without making the dog overexcited and frustrated by the training because they're too excited by what you have as the reinforcement. Now, I have some videos already on these topics and I'll link them in the description below, but they will follow this tutorial, which is a little bit more advanced, but the basics of uh, training this, follow this video. This video is on the topic of teaching a marker word that you can use to tell the dog that you're going to deliver the reinforcement to them rather than them just uh, being released from whatever they're doing to run to get the reinforcement or that the reinforcement is moving away from them. If you're familiar with my work, you might have heard me say that you can make a dog more excited by food and toys by using movement. So movement away from a dog excites them. And if you want to calm a dog, you're going to use slower movement and the movement is going to move towards the dog in order to get their toy or their treat. So if you teach a marker word, which means the dog did something right and the, they, they've earned a reinforcement and the, the marker word predicts a slow, calm reinforcement delivery, what's going to happen is that marker word is going to calm the dog down and it's also going to make the dog calmer about the toy or the food that they're going to be receiving. Um, so basically you can also excite a dog uh, by food and toys if you had the opposite uh, problem that your dog is too calm and not finding the food or toys reinforcing, reinforcing enough to learn. And I'll link a video in the description below if you're having that opposite problem. Down. To train the calm marker, Good. I suggest choosing a time of day that your dog is calm and relaxed and using low value treats Good. or toys at first. First, you can begin by saying the calm marker and then slowly delivering Good. the treat or the toy to your dog. Once you've done that a couple of times, you can then move on to asking for a behavior mm. your dog already knows that's a calm behavior like a down or a settle. Then practice saying your marker, good mm. or yep, and then slowly moving to deliver the treat mm. or the toy to your dog. You can play an impulse control game using the calm marker. Hold two low value toys or low value treats out to the side and ask your dog for attention or simply mark when your dog offers eye contact. Use your calm marker and then slowly deliver one of the toys or treats to your dog. Bye. Good. Get it. If your dog is taking the treats hard, you can slowly put the treat on the ground. And if your dog is excited by the toys, you can simply give the dog the toy rather than playing tug Good. like I'm doing Good. with Epic here. Touch. Here's Good. an example of using the calm marker and calm treat delivery to teach Touch. the concept of a duration Good. head position during healing or waiting at the Touch. handler's side. Good. Regardless of if you want to do heel work with Good. your dog, this is a great exercise for teaching your dog Touch. impulse control and working for duration Good. without getting overexcited or frustrated around food. So I have multiple treats in my hands and I'm going to feed her one at a time. I'm asking her to touch my leg. Touch. Marking it. Good. And then I'm going to slowly move to feed her the treat like that. Touch. Good. 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 And I actually learned this technique from a couple trainers, Bridget Van Gessel for training heel work and my mentor, Kyle Rayon, good, for teaching a calm treat delivery. Touch, good. So when the dog is doing that, with duration, you can start to move your hand over here so if they move to look at the treat, you can tell them touch again, if they know that cue uh, to touch your leg. Good. 
And then if you're worried your dog might look at the treat, you can begin by movement, touch, touch, movement like this, and then when it comes back, marking good, before then moving to feed the treat. Touch. And then when the dog is really good, good. You mark here and then go to feed the dog in position. Good job. Touch. Good. Touch. Good. So Halo's very excited when I say, ooh, <laughs> pause. Pause up for the treat. See how he's very excited right now. So we're going to work on some calm stuff using that calm, calm marker. I actually excited him a little bit before filming, and now he's very excited, as you can see, for the treats that he really likes. So I might just start off by calmly feeding him like this, or asking him to lay down, and then I'm going to calm. Do you see how excited he is? He can't even lay down. He keeps poking at my hand for the treat. So uh, while he's laying down like that, I'm going to calmly pet him and put the treat down on the ground. And he's also putting his foot against my leg um, because he's impatient for the treat to come like that. Another thing I can do is sigh and blink my eyes and move slowly so that he's getting calmer and relaxed. Good. And now I can start to use that calm marker and move slowly to give him the treat. Good. So if your dog gets overexcited at any point during the training for the food, you can, oh no, Smashy, did you fall or did you just get up to bother us for treats? Lie down. There you go. Splash gets to do whatever she wants because she's 13. Hey, baby. Okay, sorry, Halo. That was very distracting for him. So um, if at any point during your training your dog gets overexcited by the treats, you can either take a break and wait till they're calmer, or you can try doing this where you just work on calm behaviors, such as laying down, settling on a mat, handling, good, and using a calm marker that you've conditioned like good for calm behaviors and the calm treat delivery towards the dog like that. Good job. If your dog is taking treats hard from you, I have a video on teaching your dog to take treats softly. And one of the games is teaching them how to put, teaching your dog what to do when you put the treat on the ground like this, which is to not just bite at your hand as your hand goes down. So you can check that video out. If when you put a treat down slowly that the dog just mugs your hand like he's doing now. Um, and as I said, I overexcited him before filming so, so that he would act completely untrained. <laughs> hey, Pupsy. Good. Good boy. Okay. Splash you in the way a little bit. Good boy. Good. Do you see how he can't look up from the treats? He's got his focus here on my hand to see what it might do. So I'm going to wait till he makes eye contact. Good. And did you see how quickly he looked back for the food? That's information that he's very excited by it. Good. Good. This is the footage of before the training took place. It's quite a difference. Pause up. Good. There are some dogs you might never need to excite over the reinforcement and simply work on calmness. I always like to begin training new behaviors when the dog is calm. So I'll use a calm marker when training behaviors like this and then add speed and enthusiasm. But with this behavior of doing the pause up on my arm, um, I did it in very exciting situations for so long that the beha behavior has also made him very excited when he's doing the behavior. So I can always go back and make him calmer by using a slow, calm treat delivery so that the, the cue, pause up, predicts something calm rather than the frisbee being thrown. Pause up. Good. Here's an example of using a calm marker to train a precise movement using a toy as a reinforcer. Switch, wait, cross, wait, 
Switch. Good. Good job. Ready? Wait. Cross, wait. Switch, wait. Cross, wait. Good. Catch. Awesome. Good girl. Ready? Switch, wait. Good. Catch. Awesome. Switch, wait. Cross, wait. Switch, wait. Cross, wait. Switch, wait. Good. Catch it. What to do for dogs overexcited about food. This video is for those of you who have just adopted a new dog or puppy and the dog is overexcited or over aroused when you try to use treats to train your dog. Now, if you just ignore your dog's excitement, some dogs could habituate to using food and calm down, but most often they will stay that excited about food or even become more and more excited the more training you do. So it's really important to first focus on your dog's arousal level for the treats that you're using because if you skip this step and you just use treats and your dog's too excited, what can happen is that your dog will always be too excited when you train and it can get in the way of learning new behaviors because your dog's just so excited it makes it hard to learn. It can also have the effect that when you ask your dog for specific behaviors that they learned when they were too excited, they become too excited as they do them. So you might get whining and barking or just overexcitement whenever you say the cue like sit or down or spin or something like that. So to solve that problem, I'm going to talk to you about some of the things that you can do. The first thing that you want to do is work on capturing calmness around food. I have a full video tutorial on how to do this and I'll link it in the description. But basically, you're going to have low value treats in your treat bag for five days. And then once your dog is successful with that, you can move on to higher value treats, but start with very low value treats so it's easy for your dog. And you're just gonna wear your treat bag around the house and those moments that you notice your dog calm, relaxed, and not thinking about the food and how to get it, you're gonna get some food, calmly walk over, and place a treat between your dog's paws. Then you're going to wait for the next moment that your dog is calm, settled, and not thinking about the food. An added benefit to this exercise is that it makes it much faster to teach long duration behaviors like a down stay or teaching your dog to wait for their turn. The next thing that you want to do is teach your dog to take treats nicely. I'll link a tutorial on three games on how to train this important behavior. Now, you also want to keep in mind how you deliver the treat to your dog. If your, do if your dog gets overexcited by food, you don't want to make your dog more excited by the way you deliver the treat. So you want to refrain from moving your hand fast, waving the treat around, or throwing the treat if you have a dog that's already excited about food because you can make them way too excited by food, as you can see I've done with my terrier here, and it can interfere with your training. So instead of a fast treat delivery with a dog that's very aroused by food, you can use a slow treat delivery. So I'm going to get the treat and slowly move it towards the dog like that. Good. And you'll see it'll take a little bit longer to help calm him down because I got him quite excited. Good job, Tug. It takes some time to learn the skill of moving slow because naturally we want to move fast a slow treat delivery can also help for a dog that's hand shy and worried about fast movement and it can help calm that dog down and trust you. Good job, Tug. And finally, if you're going to be using food as a lure where your dog follows a treat to learn new behaviors, I don't suggest jumping in and trying to use food as a lure to train behaviors first. I first suggest you teach your dog the concept of following food to learn a behavior. I'll link a video tutorial below in the description. But basically, one very simple exercise is instead of putting the food in front of your dog's face and wiggling it around and moving it, which can make your dog over aroused instantly and try to bite and lick your hand, you can hold the food above the dog and click your dog at first for following the food from a distance with a closed mouth. Good. You can put the treat down on the ground if you think your dog might take the treat hard out of your hand. Good. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to channel KikoPup to show your support. Splash paws up. Give me a kiss. Oh no! Don't you want to give me a kiss? Splashy, kiss. Mwah. Bye! Calming the toy obsessed dog. Today I want to talk to you about dogs that can be overexcited by toys or are constantly asking you to play with the toy and not getting enough rest during the day if you're home all day. Now, some dogs, like my other Border Collie, Splash, you can reinforce them every time they ask you to play with them because they won't ask you very often. So with my other Border Collie, Splash, who's 11 now, throughout her whole life, if she ever wanted to play with me, I'd be like, oh boy, cool, let's play. But for other dogs, if you always play with them, when they ask you to play with them, some dogs can start to want to play with you all the time and get anxious and stressed when you can't play with them and it becomes almost obsessive. So I want to show you a very easy game to play with your dog that can be overexcited by toys. The point of this exercise is not to suddenly limit how much exercise your dog gets, but to make the exercise and the play contingent on calmness, which means that the dog will be reinforced with play for being calm rather than being overexcited, stressed, and bothering you for your attention when, you get, when the dog gets to play. So here we are in the living room and my Border Collie is nice and relaxed. This is Wish, my three-year-old Border Collie. She just turned three and she is really good at settling. So, when you work on settle for food, it's exactly the same exercise if you've seen my settle for food video. Um, settle for toys is exactly the same. So you're waiting for that moment in your house when your dog is not thinking about playing and then you're going to tell your dog, hey, let's play. So I'm going to say to Wish, hey, do you want to play with the frisbee? Come. And then I'm going to get the frisbee out of the drawer. Oops, wrong drawer. And you can see she's not that excited about it. And it's pretty calm. Are you ready? Twerp. Kitch. Yeah. Woo. Woo. Another thing you can do besides initiating play when your dog's not thinking about it when they're in a calm settle is to initiate the play when your dog's not thinking about it throughout the day while they're doing other activities where they're not too excited. So for example, maybe you've let your dog out to the toilet, you're letting your dog back in and they're casually walking in. Then you can ask your dog, hey, do you want to play frisbee in not too an exciting voice? And then you play with your dog. Or you suddenly whip the frisbee out of your pocket. Hey, Wishy. Ready? I find what usually happens in a household where a dog is a little overexcited by a toy or obsessive about toys is that the dog is pretty much ignored all the time that the dog is perfect and calm and relaxed. And what is reinforced is the dog acting over aroused, stressed, or obsessively bothering the owner in order for the toy. So the toy becomes contingent on acting overexcited and obsessive about toys. So to change that picture, you really need to start paying attention to your dog's behavior throughout the day and picking moments that your dog is calm, relaxed, and not thinking about toys to initiate playing with a toy with your dog. Now, if you have a really mellow, chilled out dog that very rarely asks to play with you, it's not that big of, a, big of a deal. This tutorial is for dogs that can get overexcited and obsessive about toys. I hope you enjoyed that tip. See you next time. Don't forget to subscribe to channel Kikopa. You guys want to play with toys? Splash, you want to play with a toy? Ready? Get it, Splash. You get it. You play. Go for it. Turn around. Turn around. You go pull games. Yeah. Good job. Drop. Good. Yeah. You get it. Wish it. Yeah. Good job. This is a Kiko Pup members video on building and lowering arousal over food. This month's members video is going to be on the topic of building and lowering arousal over food. Now for the past few weeks I've been quite busy. Uh, I've been preparing presentations for the APDT and the Pet Professional Guild uh, for the conferences online conferences and uh, one of the presentations that I'm doing is on training sh things we can train shelter dogs to set them up 
for future learning after adoption with people who are not very skilled at training. And one of the topics that I talk about is working on the dog's excitement or disinterest in food. So um, I think it's a great idea to set a dog up for success if the dog is not very motivated by food to reinforce interest and condition food to be more interesting to the dog in training sessions. And conversely, if the dog is way too excited by food that you can't even train to work on that to help out uh, the future adopters so they're not stuck with that really difficult uh, job that's really uh, easier for a professional trainer to work on than uh, just someone who's never trained dogs at all and isn't really good at reading the dog's body language that they're frustrated or overexcited or disinterested. So um, a lot of people think or believe that Food in itself is primary reinforcement or a reinforcer to the dog and that it's unchanging that the dog, if they're disinterested in food, that's just how they are or if they're overexcited by food, that's how they'll be forever. But this is simply not true. We can condition food to be more exciting or less exciting to dogs. We can condition punishers to become reinforcers, and we can condition reinforcers to become punishers inadvertently. So for example, uh, if you had a dog that liked food inside, but you only tried to feed your dog outside when they had other things in mind, say at the dog park when they want to play, and you're trying to get your dog to do stuff and trying to give them treats, or perhaps uh, if you had a fearful dog and you were um, trying to condition the dog to love other dogs, but uh, the criteria was too high, so every time they saw a dog, they got a piece of food. Uh, what could happen in the future uh, with, in a specific scenario is that when the dog sees the food, they get scared and think that there's another dog coming and maybe they don't even want to eat. So uh, the food could, could start to have a negative emotional, create a negative emotional response in the dog. So the fact that reinforcers are subjective to the environment and the situation is both a blessing and also a curse because it means we can change how the dog reacts to food now, but it also means that we need to look out in the future and read the dog's body language as to whether they're interested in the food or not interested in the food or getting too frustrated and excited by the food. For a dog that's overexcited by food, I suggest using low value food at first to reinforce behavior. I have a video on what treats to use that you can watch, but for a lot of dogs, low value treats are their own kibble. And for some dogs, they like Cheerios, hum human food like Cheerios. Um, you could get something that's just oats and not uh, wheat. Uh, if, you're, if you're worried about that, but something dry and not very flavorful. Um, and of course, you want to make sure that you're not giving too many treats that are outside of the dog's diet uh, so that they stay healthy, but it might get the ball rolling to use something like that at first. So the other thing that's really important is that in the dog's history, what has happened is when they're about to eat food, there's the anticipation of them getting to eat the food. So for example, another example of this is um, dogs getting excited by guests coming in the door. Just the presence and the ringing of the doorbell makes the dog way too excited. So when the guest actually comes in, they're overexcited. So the present, the preparing of, uh, preparing of the dog's meal or the anticipation that they're going to get the treat. Maybe they've done the behavior, they get the click, and now they're going to get the treat. That's made them overexcited, uh, and there's no way to calm them down before they actually eat the food. So working on the settle where the food is being presented when there's no anticipation that they're going to get the food is really going to help calm the dog down with food. So after getting that initial treat, the dog might then start to anticipate food is coming and get overexcited again. But if you uh, practice that subtle behavior where there's food in a jar and the dog learns that they're just getting a one-off treat when they relax, you can show your dog you have no more food, that's really going to help lower the dog's arousal when eating the treat and it's not going to make the dog as excited. 
So sometimes I suggest with clients to do this for five days where um, the only time they're getting the food is when they're not expecting the food. And you can do the same with meals. You prepare the meal while somebody else is gone, uh, you know, walking the dog, and then uh, the dog hasn't heard the pre preparation of the meal. And then when the dog's not thinking they're going to get their dinner, maybe you feed them a little bit early, like 20 minutes early. You go get the food and you say, OK, get your dinner. Oh, <laughs> that made Halo sitting on the couch get excited. So I'm just going to give them treats because that was kind of mean. <laughs> Halo. Halo. Poor guy. <laughs> he was really listening. <laughs> Another thing you can do is feed the dog when they're not thinking about the food, but they don't necessarily have to be laying down. So if you're on a walk and your dog notices something in the environment, you can feed the dog a treat, or perhaps they've gone to sniff a bush, and then you could feed them a treat so they're not building up that anticipation they're going to get one. Uh, then I do suggest if that gets your dog to focus on you and they're staring at you for the treat to have a signal that you're not going to give anymore. Uh, what I usually do is say, all done, go sniff, and then you can reinforce them for going sniff uh, if you want, but really make sure to show them that you're not going to give them any more food. They don't need to do any behaviors in order to get the food. And that can really, really help uh, for loose leash walking as well. So um, another really important concept is the movement of the food. If you have a dog that's very excited by food, mo the movement of the food away from the dog is going to build more excitement over the food. Um, so with a dog that's excited by food and aroused by food, you don't really want to begin with the food moving away. You want to move the food into the dog's space, not in an intimidating way, but the dog isn't thinking they have to do anything to get the food. So a slow, calm treat delivery where the food comes and drops between the dog's paws like that. Also, if dogs take treats hard, that's a great first way to deliver treats. I have a video on Take Treats Nicely on YouTube if you want more ideas about games to play if your dog takes the treat hard. Um, and I'll link the videos in the description of this video so you can find them more easily. But I did make her excited when I started moving the, f <laughs> moving the food away, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, <laughs> she's drooling now. So um, a slow, calm treat delivery. And this is actually one of her favorite treats. I'm using tiny little bits of cheese at the moment because uh, we're cooking some chicken, but it's still in the oven. So this is not the healthiest treat for dogs, but uh, it's one of Wish's favorite treats. So a slow, calm treat delivery like that. Another thing you want to keep in mind is the time of day that you train the dog. If the dog is very excited or it's just before a meal, the dog might be more excited by the food. So to begin with, with a dog that's very excited by food, it's a great idea to feed a big breakfast and then train after the breakfast or feed dinner and train after the dinner, making sure not to do any fast movements after, after the dog has a full stomach and especially not training the trick of rolling over or putting paws up where they're standing up just to prevent uh, bloat where the stomach twists. So you never want to do lots of active stuff after a dog's meal. But if your dog is excited by food, I would suggest only working on calm behaviors for food first. So the dog isn't predicting an excited, exciting movement and the dog isn't predicting that you do an exciting movement at first uh, for the food. Hey, wishy. If the dog is disinterested in food, you can train your dog before the meal times where your dog is anticipating getting their meal and you're going to do quick training sessions while the dog is motivated to want to work for the food. And when you feed your dog their meal, if they don't finish their food, I suggest taking it and putting it up on a counter because what can happen if food is just left down is that it can be very disinteresting to dogs when they're seeing food all the time and not feeling like eating it. So even if uh, perhaps you have a dog that's the correct weight and they're not overweight, they just don't like to finish their dinner all in one sitting, 
let them have some, put it on the counter when they're disinterested, and then represent it to them later in the evening, maybe a couple hours later, see if they want it, and if they don't, put it back. Um, this will stop, uh, decrease their disinterest in food than if it's always around where they're like, eh, I don't really want that. To initially get your dog interested in working for food, I suggest using a large variety of treats that you think will be high level reinforcers for your dog and do little taste tests and see what your dog is the most interested in. And for her, cheese is very interesting to the dog. And when setting up training sessions, if you have a dog that's really not interested in food, you want to make sure to be using a high level of reinforcement and extremely low criteria. So for example, um, if the dog is slightly feeling pressured that they have to do something for the food or maybe feeling a little bit of social pressure, that might make them just turn off completely. So you can train behaviors um, by just presenting food. So perhaps you want your dog to go in a circle around you. You could just put treats down in a row like this and the dog has no pressure um, of feeling like they have to do anything. They're just eating the treats and going in the circle and then you could just decrease how many treats you give to build the behavior like that. You can also do this with leg weaving. So for leg weaving, I'm just making a little Hansel and Gretel trail of treats like this. And it, <laughs> she's figured it out because she already knows this game. And then you just decrease how many treats are being dropped on the ground. Now, uh, the other thing that I wanted to talk about is for calming a dog down, you're moving the treats slowly into the dog's face. So you can use calm mar markers associated with calmness, which I call calm markers. So good means that I'm gonna, is going to predict a slow treat delivery like this. Or when the dog's settled, I might say good or yep. And I also use it for calm massage, where I'm massaging the dog good, like that. But for exciting the dog, I'm going to use other markers. And for me, the clicker is a very exciting marker for my dogs because I use it for teaching pretty active behaviors as well as the word yes. So I'm gonna say the exciting marker and then the treat is gonna move away from the dog if I need to excite the dog more. Now for some dogs you might never need to excite them like my terrier and wish I don't often need to, to make her any more excited. Uh, when we start training, she'll start getting excited because she loves doing the behaviors. Um, but if you were to want to excite the dog, you mark and then move to feed the treat. So you don't even need to work on any behavior. Your dog is just learning to enjoy the sound of the clicker and the food, no pressure. So I'm going to click and then move away from the dog with a treat like that. Awesome. Good job. You can also pretend that you're really interested in the treats like this. Mmm. Oh, what's this? Mmm. Yeah. Oh, these are, these are so good. Mmm. Good job. And you're marking and reinforcing that interest in the dog wanting a treat. You can also practice throwing the treat and then marking for your dog looking for the next treat. You can also move away from your dog if you have more space, uh, she hasn't found all the treats yet. So when the dog turns around, your movement also is exciting the dog to want to come to you. So the, the, the pressure is completely off. It's a completely different picture than asking your dog, sit, sit, and then the food goes into their face like that. That's not as exciting as you playing a keep away game with your own movement the keep away with your body and keep away with the treats is really going to encourage the dog to want to work for the food. Hey guys, yeah. I suggest when training any behavior that you begin with calm movements and calm treat deliveries and then when the dog understands the behavior and you want more speed and enthusiasm, then you can quickly start to incorporate the fast, exciting treat deliveries if your dog needs motivation or you can use toys as the reinforcers. So if you go on to using toys as the reinforcers, you want to make sure to drastically uh, reduce criteria. Oh, pause. 
Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support my work, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. You can also become a supporting member of channel KikoPup by clicking the join button. See you later. Good job.